And now our next segment, the industrial segment, we have Patricia Quintana, commercial advisor for Comrail Doral. Patricia has over 537 transactions under her belt. She's been in the business over 30 years and has been a CCIM designate since 2003. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, for that intro. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 CCIM Outlook Conference. We are very excited to be doing this in this format. I think we're going to have a great time. I want to thank our sponsors, PS Mrs. Parks, for sponsoring the industrial segment of this uh, conference, Comstack for giving us so much information, so much um, detailed um, statistics, CoStar, and CB Richard Ellis. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to start with Mac macro and then we'll go down to micro. We're gonna start with the global, national, and then we'll end it up with our own neck of the woods down here. So it's no surprise, e-commerce will drive demand. Industrial has been one of the most resilient real estate sectors amid the COVID-19 crisis. Kept afloat by rising e-commerce demand, Year-over-year e-commerce year, e growth surged 44.5% in second quarter from 14.8% in the first quarter. This has put pressure on retailers, wholesalers, and third-party logistics companies to reach consumers while lowering transportation costs. Demand for space in the near term will be driven by e-commerce. Again, CB Richard Ellis Research has found that one billion dollars in incremental e-commerce sales generates 1.25 million square feet of warehouse space demand. Therefore, net absorption is projected to reach nearly 250 million square feet in 2021, more than the previous five years annual average of 211 million square feet. This will spur new construction, which is already near record levels and strong pre-leasing of speculative projects. And as we all know, um, because of the COVID, uh, more retail to industrial conversions next year, this year, 2021. Given the increase again in online shopping, retail to industrial conversion projects will likely accelerate in 2021. There's a strong demand for infill warehouse space and urban cores, but land constraints and high costs have limited new development. Adaptive reuse of real retail buildings for industrial occupiers is expected to accelerate in 2021. So you see all those um, big shopping malls and that's what's going to happen there. Overall, new industrial completions are forecast to jump by 29% next year, according to CB. Uh, given strong pre-leasing of speculative projects, demand is expected to keep pace with new supply especially as occupiers flock to modern warehouse space. Inventory control is a top concern. Okay, remember when we ran out of toilet paper and we couldn't get anything? So they're looking at um, increasing inventory as high as 60 days. Can you believe that? Inventory control will be a prime focus of industrial occupiers next year. As they increase their footprints to store safety stock, in case of any supply chain disruptions, many suppliers will increase inventories from 15 days to as high as 60 days. Wholesalers and outsourced third-party logistics will be expected to significantly increase inventories onshore to avoid the disruptions from trade conflicts of the past year. Many companies are used, utilizing a China plus one strategy to diversify product sourcing and limit any supply chain disruptions related to COVID. Source countries west of Singapore, including Europe, will generally use U.S. East Coast ports, while those east of Singapore will use West Coast ports, and Central and South American countries will use Gulf and Southeast ports. Onshoring of products in the U.S. or Mexico is plausible, but will present real estate logistics and labor challenges. Diversifying or completely changing supply sorts away from Asia is a long 
and very hard task with uncertain how much industrial real estate demand will be affected. Markets to watch. Hey, Southeast is in there, of course. Okay, the Southwest and the Southeast U.S. will have the highest rates of population growth over the next five years. We, we all know that. Everybody wants to live down here. In the Southwest, in the Inland Empire, will remain the dominant big box industrial market. Phoenix, Las Vegas, Denver, Salt Lake City, and Reno all are posting robust industrial fundamentals and development because of their proximity to burgeoning populations. Texas will provide the most opportunities for investors and occupies with forecast populations growth of 9% over the next five years, largely benefiting the Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and San Antonio industrial markets. Meanwhile, El Paso will benefit from its border locations with Mexico and the recently enacted United States-Mexico-Canada agreement is the USMCA, which should increase its manufacturing and distribution base. Industrial asking rates in El Paso are forecast to increase by 28% over the next five years, according to C.B. Richard Ellis. The Southeast primary, that's us, primary drive of demand will be pro-business state governments offering low taxes, location incentives, and training programs for distribution employees. Robust investments to modernize logistics hubs will help occupiers reach a large number of consumers surrounding the seaport markets of Charleston, Savannah, and Virginia, as well as inland ports of Greenville, South Carolina, Atlanta, and Central Florida. Investors will seek new opportunities. They're all going to be buying industrial properties, so let's buy some. Let's all buy some industrial property, yeah. Overall, industrial real estate, uh, industrial investment sales volume increased by 17% in the first half of 2020. However, a decline, uh, we don't know why, it, by 39% over the year in the second quarter. Despite the second quarter dec decline due to COVID, sale prices were largely unchanged and cap rates either stabilized or just a little lower. Despite low, low cap rates, Capital is expected to continue to be flowing into the industrial market from both domestic and foreign investors. Most expected rental rate growth over their holding period, which will offset a low cap going, a low going in cap rate. Okay, we know. Industrial real estate would be a haven for investors compared with other commercial properties. Yes, unfortunately, we all know how, how retail and office has been impacted. Uh, many core industrial portfolios are institutionally owned. REITs, REITs are buying everything. So it's difficult, it's difficult for other types of investors to expand into this segment of the national inventory. So they will look for opportunities in two other, seg other segments. It's modern, modern class A buildings in emerging markets near logistic cubs and growing population centers. Class B and class C light industrial buildings in urban markets with below average vacancy rates. Strong fundamentals will continue to put upward pressure on rents fueling investor demand. Overall, industrial rents grew by 6.3% year over year in the second quarter, and this level of growth is expected to continue in 2021. In some cases, rent growth will be higher by market and size segment. Nearly 80% of the U.S. industrial market will see positive rent growth. You can't go wrong with industrial real estate over the next 12 months. And most will exceed their historic average over the next several years, according again to C.B. Richard Ellis. Then we're gonna have a demand for new features of the buildings because of all these e-commerce uh, fulfillments that require new design features for warehouse and distribution buildings, including ceiling heights up to 40 feet. Can you imagine 40 feet ceiling heights? Wow, multiple mezzanine floors and 3 million total square feet or more. In short term, many of these buildings will be built to suit and significantly boost net absorption. In addition, to heighten awareness of safety and health measures, we all know because of due to COVID, there will be an increased need for technology and sustain for sustainability leading to bigger power requirements for machinery robotics, and other picking and sorting technology. 
more warehouses will have HVAC systems for employees' comfort to keep machineries at optimal operating temperatures. Taller, more environmentally conscious tech-centric buildings will be the norm. Occupiers will demand more skylights, more natural light, and renewable energy sources. Other sustainable features will provide water savings, recycling, recycling capabilities, and eventually charging units for electric trucks. Yep. While product sourcing and inventory control and new building features will be top of mind for occupiers, the source and volume of consumption will dictate where occupiers locate their total space demand. As retail sales remain strong and the share of those sales from e-commerce increases, industrial demand from both occupiers and investors will remain robust for the foreseeable future. So let's look at Miami Dade County, Southeast. And we're gonna look at, um, see this slide where it tells you Miami-Dade year-end market statistics total. We had a vacancy. We ended with a vacancy of 5%. That's not bad. Our average rents were 282 per square foot. Inventory, 250, over 250 million square feet under construction. Over 4 million square feet. Uh, net absorption, 2 million. Sale price, average sale price, $151 square foot. Very good. 12-month volume and sales, $893 million. Okay, and then the cap rate of 5.7. The 12-month sales volume growth, it's, we, we had a, well, we all know why, negative 48.6%. The top industrial markets in Miami-Dade County, Hialeah, Medley, Airport West, Airport East, Miami Lakes, all this is data, um, Thank you, thanks to CoStar. Um, the average rents vary from, as you could see, Hialeah is the lowest, 927. Highest is Airport West, no surprise, at Doral is, the, is very expensive compared to other markets. And um, look at the average rent growth and look at the inventory of the buildings, um, a lot in Hialeah. And of course, Airport West as well. And the 12 months absorptions, you see them there. And the vacancies, there are the, the square feet and vacancies, okay? The quarterly, the Miami-Dade quarterly vacancy and asking rates, okay? As you could see, in the second, the, four, the fourth quarter of 2020, we had the lowest vacancy of 5%. So that, that's pretty good, considering what, what we, we went through. And uh, so that's, that's great. Um, average rental rates went up. You see that? They are now at 280 per square foot. The top deals, okay, let's see. Uh, look at the size of those spaces. 310 square feet, 310,000 square feet, sold for $44 million at 142 square feet. Um, 3980 West 104th Street, 214,000, sold for 31 million, and so forth and so on. You see the, the other three properties, and all in the 140, 160 rates, okay? Top leases, okay? No surprise that Amazon had four of the five top leases in, in South Florida. In Pompano, I wanted to include this, even though it's not Miami Day, but I just wanted you to. Pompano is 252,000. It's a new lease in Hialeah. There was Carnival, Carnival 229,000 square feet. I hope they're doing okay with there. And uh, uh, new leases for Amazon uh, over here, two uh, in in Miami, one in Hialeah. Amazing. Projects under construction. There is in, in the in the in the there's going to be 2.75 million square feet is going to be completed in 2021. That's amazing. Um, Home Depot, 700,000 square feet 
in Hialeah completed in, in February, uh, 13915 Northwest 100, 107th Avenue, uh, completed in February as well, 352,000 square feet, another Home Depot building too, uh, 350,000 in February, uh, 4041 Northwest 87th Avenue, 300,000 square feet completed. This one's for October 2022. So um, gotta wait a little bit more for that one. Uh, First Park, Miami, July 2021. Grantney Logistics Center Building B, uh, over 200,000 square feet by June 2021. Miami, uh, 27, August 21, over 200,000. Grantney Logistics Center, uh, over 200,000 completed in June, and 8404, over 200,000, Northwest 93 completed in 2021. Okay, so that's our statistic part. So where are we headed? Where, what's going to happen? I'm going to do the crystal ball the way um, Mike Silver used to do. What is going to, what's going to happen in, in South Florida? Well, South Florida will continue to attract residents. So we're, we have a beautiful city, beautiful part. Our weather, can you can't beat this weather anywhere. Whether it's due to aging population that moves south or fewer regulations on residents' businesses and that are burdening other residents in states such as California and New York. Or we continue to attract people because we have no state income tax. Yay. No matter the reason, more warehouse space will continue to be required as population continues to increase. As with other commercial sectors, industrial users will continue to reassess their required amount of office space. So within the warehouse, for example, then when they lease a, a warehouse or purchase a new facility, maybe many industrial users are allowing their accounting, their HR, and similar departments to work remotely, so they're not going to be required that much office space. We will con continue to see speculative construction moving forward, okay? And, and that's because of the high demand. Everybody needs um, industrial space. Um, South Florida will continue to see tenants seeking over 50,000 square feet, of, and they will have a lot of options for anybody looking for over 50,000. Smaller pay spaces than that, it's going to be very competitive. And again, expect to see more infill development, development or repurposing of old facilities as land constraints pushes prices up and demand for last mile delivery sites. Okay. And again, as you know, more money than ever before will go to industrial real estate. Expect to see mergers and acquisitions of REITs. So let's go buy some industrial property. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you again. I want to thank our sponsors, PS Business Parks. Yes, for being our industrial and Comstack. And I want to thank CoStar for giving me the, the some statistics on my graphs that I use and CB Richard Ellis on the, some of the verbiage I use in the report. Thank you all and have a fabulous 2021.